her arms signed by them because she went to every people. Oh, I'm going to think. All righty. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a facing, a front neck facing and a back neck facing. All righty. We're going to put our right sides together. <laughs> no, that's quite okay. How many workplaces do you reckon you'd actually work at where they would? Do you reckon there would be a perfect workplace in the world that would? I don't think there would be too many. I know, the little blue one, I know. I just, just I watched you. We both watched you. And if I, if I forget, um, someone else will remember for me. We'll see. <laughs> Whether Alice remembers or not, we'll see. Okay, so I put my two shoulders together on both sides. Okay, we're going to flat bed them together. Oops, sorry, I'm out of focus again. Flat bed. Now, because this is a facing, because it is fused, we are not going to overlock this edge. We're just going to press it open. I'm drawing the two together again. I'm continuing it all the way through. Out of the focus, just thing. Snip, snip, and snip. Okay, we're going to press them open. We're going to go over to the iron. We're going to press them open. Um, because they are fused, they should not fray. They should sit. And because they also will be on the inside, even more so. Um, I'm saying that if you do have a fabric that you know is going to fray a lot, I'm pretending that I'm pressing. This is my pretend press. But we will take to the. You, you guys will. I'm just going to do it for speed for the camera. Um, you will go to the iron and you will press it and pretend to press it. I'm not, not pretending, not sorry. You will go to the iron and press it and not pretend to press it like I am. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the outside edge. So this is our inside neckline here. This outside edge here, all the way around it, from centre back, uh, from centre back all the way through, all the way around, we're going to overlock around. So I've overlocked around the outside edge, my entire front facing, try back facing. I'm now going to put my right sides together around my neck. So I've got my mane and my facing. And we're just too low, this camera it should be up here somewhere, shouldn't it? Um, putting my mane and my facing together. So I'm matching my center backs. One pin, cut edge together, cut edge together, bong both edges, neckline and centre back, sorry. Making my, still my side seams, well not side seams, these are shoulder seams aren't they? Yeah. Make sure they, I'm putting a pin right in the centre of that seam, what am I checking for on the other side? Matching. Is it matching? So is that pin right? Yeah. It is, yes. I'm going to do my quarters first, you'll see. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. So that's my centre back and my shoulder. What's my next quarter going to be on my bodice? Yeah, centre front. front, yep. My centre front point at the centre front here. Put a pin in him. Cha cha cha. Oh, no, that's not my centre front. That's my side. That's my one up here. This is my centre front. Um, this is my centre front down here, wrong one. That's my side point, because it's a sweetheart, isn't it? Two points. This is my centre front. Alrighty, keep going to my next point. To my next point. Now, this is the test of things to see whether things actually match back. If they don't match back, if after we've done all of this and they don't match, what are the possibilities? What could have gone wrong? Uh, the sizing we have, no, the seams that we have taken are not like one thing. So your sewing's back. bad. So your sewing's not up to scratch. You're taking too much on your seam allowances. What else is, could be going wrong? Patterns, 
pattern really off exactly so your pattern making could be crap what else Cutting, thank you. So there's three places it can go wrong. So when you put these stitch these, when you pin these two together, they should actually be very similar, which they are, thank goodness. There's not, by my dissimilar, I mean this. So if you, you put the two together and you find that one side is much bigger than the other side, they're not the same, there's a problem. These two are very much the same. Same, work my way around it. Same, beautiful. Same, same, phew. So that tells me that my padding is ace, pat my cutting is ace, and my sewing is ace, okay? If they weren't, it'd show up there. Gold star for you. Sorry, yeah, gold star for me, yay for me. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my good old trusty, um, and I want you guys to start to get, um, to try and get an erasable pen if you can, please. Erasable pens disappear with heat. So that's what we want. Get it from Big W. Yep, Big W, Office Works. I'm not sure if you can get it from Coles or not, or Woolies um, or. Woolworths, I think you can. Yeah, so. You can get the basics mm -hmm. from. I don't think yep. like So what we're going to mark up is let's have a look at our front sweetheart here. What we're marking up are these corners one corner, two corner, and three corner. What do you think we're marking up to see? The seam allowance so you can fit it in those spots. Exactly. We want to see, marking our seam allowance. So that we can actually see exactly where that corner is. Come on, are you following me? Let's do that, Tina. And I'm not marking the, everything in. I'm just marking in seam allowance for corners only. If I was a really precise, I'd be able to stop in my corner. But it doesn't matter if you overrun. Because I want to see, stitching along there, stop, pivot point, go that, change direction, go that way. Okay? That's what I want to see. You can, if, you, if you're actually really clever, I'll see if I can be clever on this other corner. You should be able to draw and stop right where the one centimetre is, but I'm not that clever sometimes. Let's just put it out flat. And the reason why I pin it for a start is to check that it matches. There's no point drawing all this up if it's not matching and you've done something and you have to fix something. So I always check measurements for, oh no, I'm not good enough. Not that good enough. Okay, so once again, coming into the corner, that's my corner coming out. Now this one's a tricky one because of the angle, nice and pointy. Oh, see, am I out of the screen? Oi. I get my, take up my pin. I think I put my pin with precision art right in the corner. How's that for good? Okay, so now I've got coming, stitching in, stitching out. So I'm only doing two or three centimetres either side. I'm just going to put another pin in that. Either side of my corner. So as I'm stitching, I should be able to maintain one in the middle here based on my foot gauge. I'm just coming into those corners. And I, what I want to see is the point. Where that point is that I pivot and change direction. Where that point is that I pivot. And where that point is that I pivot. Okay, so um, top tip, you can actually use your, a normal pen now. But from, um, the reason I'm changing and I'm starting to use an erasable pen now is because some of our garments that we're doing in the future, you may have the choice of fabric, being able to make something to fit yourselves. So we need to get into the habit of using suitable materials. In before, or when you're doing calico, it doesn't matter so much if you put, you know, pen on the I'll also say though, um, there's also one that's um, like a fabric marker that's mm -hmm. erasable, also by friction. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have, however, noticed as I was making my cloth mm -hmm. with that sort of grey fabric, it sort of seems to leave white marks. Yeah. So two things so about that. Um, chalk, you can buy fabric chalk, tailor's yeah. chalk, by far the best option yeah. because it blows yeah. out with air. Yeah. Um, so those ones you can also get pencil versions of the tailor's mm -hmm. chalk. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. very good. Um, yep, so tailor's chalk is excellent because it disperses without anything. There's two other... I'm just going to shut this off. Probably, wow. 